number three of the Derange Podcast. Today our guest on the show uh, is a friend. He's uh, also a very renowned strength and conditioning coach in Singapore. He's the founder of Strength Avenue. Uh, let's give a big welcome to Mr. Andin Kadir. <laughs> so maybe for our <coughs> listeners and viewers, right, uh, just to start, uh, Andin, would you want to just give a brief introduction about yourself? What you do and... Uh, currently, yeah. Currently, yes, currently. Currently, I'm in a podcast setting. <laughs> what, what, uh, okay, maybe, maybe to start, mm. just for our viewers and uh, listeners, right? Uh, what do you do for a living? Oh. I, you sure, like the TikTok, really, you know, the tic- do you have TikTok? Nah? No, I, I don't have. Right? Like, like, it's a trend now that people go around, right? And then, like, knocking on people's, like, supercars, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen those, I find it quite annoying, uh. but yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm actually uh, the founder of Strength Avenue, mm-hmm. uh, a strength and conditioning facility mm-hmm. that also caters to like general population uh, right, uh, yeah. in terms of providing them uh, services for personal training and right. also lifestyle uh, prescription. Right. So basically, that's uh, the main uh, business that I'm doing currently. Right. Yeah. I think... Uh, what? You oh no, I want to ask. I mean, so that's your main business. Are you doing anything else? Like, uh, actually, I uh, yeah, like backstory. Like during uh pre COVID, right? I was actually venturing into agriculture. Oh right? wow, ah, ah, ah. that's range there. Eh? It's range. <laughs> wow, right, right, right. It's the people that we have on our show. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Wow. Which, uh, because if you have been following me, like I go to Malaysia a lot to like actually do, yeah, yeah, do my endurance tracking. hikes and everything. And then from there, I kind of like uh, fell in love with the agriculture lifestyle that some of my friends have. Wow. And then uh, some of them go to universities to actually learn how to actually like Ooh. grow crops uh, and then like uh, animals and uh, the oh. likes. Uh. So uh, I decided to save up and then take that step uh, as a means of you know like like learning something new right, uh, right, right, right. in 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 the business aspect yeah pre covid but you know uh, it's now uh, paused because, because of, of the current the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I think before before uh, before the pandemic hit I was looking at uh, Andin's Instagram feed. Every now and then he will go off oh, to and... Malaysia, right? Mm. A lot, a lot of Malaysia hikes. Uh, and I remember there was this particular post. You went beyond Malaysia, right? Uh, you... I, I mean, I went to Indonesia as well. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. And then I went to uh US where we went into the Big Bend National Park where you know like it's it's kind of like a desert, right? And then. Wow. Uh, we 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 trek and then like uh, just right before the Mexican border, yeah, just separated by the river, okay. and then after that, yeah, and then which part of US was this? Uh, I was in Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. How 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 long do you spend? You know, in that in that hike, or even before the hike, like how was the preparation like? Before? Which one the the one the the one. Uh, Talk about in Big Ben, ah, okay. The Big Ben one was actually it's Texas, right? Yeah, yeah, it's quite a leisure one. It's a leisure one whereby you know you can just drive into the national park and then you know, like park your car probably about 30 40 minutes away from, from the, the start of the from trail. the start of the trail, and then after that, you just track for like maybe one or two hours before you reach that that crossing. Ah. You have to yeah. Oh, so it's a in the, it's a day hike. Nah. It's a day hike, yeah. Oh, it's a day hike. Oh, mm. so a few days. Yeah, no, because no, 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 no. about like <laughs> yeah, yeah. in oh. United, I mean in the states usually they have those like multi day hikes. Ah, they do, they do. They have do. you yeah. you have been to some uh, of those hikes, right? Yeah, but not in not in not in not US, in the uh. US lah, But usually in the peninsula nation. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember nation. seeing some of the stories in Malaysia. Mm, mm. Sorry, yeah, raining outside. <laughs> um, yeah. Can you? Oh. So I, yeah, so I remember some of your stories. Wow, you will bring mess tea. Yeah, yeah. So uh, like the solid fuel, like you all cook food. Yes. Because those obviously overnight right? you mm-hmm. We don't use solid fuel, but we use like canister. canister. Yeah. To oh. actually cook up a meal for us every night. Mm. How how is the logistic like? 
planning, you know, one of those, mm. one of those hikes. Okay, so we have an organizer, right? Or a organizer, a guide. So it's also a friend, like. So basically, there will be probably about um, 18, packs. To 20 packs, packs all together. So that the rations, right? The rations for uh, for the whole journey, right? Is uh, distributed lah, uh, amongst us. Right. So that, you know, uh, when 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 we reach uh, camp, right, mm. you know, we will take out all the ingredients and stuff to actually make uh, the meal for you know lunch. Uh, sorry, or, to, uh, or to set dinner. up camp, mm-hmm. right. and also carrying all the equipments to actually set up camp, like you said. Uh, and, how's the process like usually? The process. Like <coughs> Pick a certain spot that you want to track really like in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Like so place. they know the route already, right? So like if, if let's say it's a three, four day hike or a five day hike, right? So we already know the checkpoints that right. we want to actually set up uh, camp at. So we try as much as possible to actually reach that uh, point. Uh. Mm. Uh, but if not, you know, like because of rain or flash floods or like trees falling and stuff, then there will always be alternative uh, campsites that we can actually set up. Uh. Wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, so the route somewhat has been tracked by others really. Mm, mm, so mm. they know the route pretty well. Yes, pretty well. yes. But you always have, because like, the thing about the jungle is that, you know, like, like sometimes the track can actually get, yeah, get, yeah, get yeah. closed up by yeah. Leaves or you know like just uh, nature happening yeah, yeah, itself, yeah. right? Uh. Sometimes the trail might not even look yeah like how it used to look. Mm. Yeah, there what were a few times about? where I was uh, where where we got lost also lah, right? Yeah. Have you ever got lost before? I did, I did on my first trek actually, but uh, that's that's uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but that's more yeah, of like that. a, <laughs> that's more of like a, uh, if you believe in like 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 the. Uh, what do you call Spirit it? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, uh, that's that's something that uh, happened to me and one of my friend also lah. Uh, whereby we actually uh, got lost uh, because we were uh, misdirected. Oh. Yeah. Misdirected by these uh, spirits of the forest. Yeah, that's what I believe lah. Wow. Mm-hmm. You mind mind sharing more? Details sure, sure, yeah, yeah, sure. So how how like how much or how far of course? Did you guys view? Yeah. Quite far. Like probably got lost for about 45 minutes oh. away from where we were. Um, okay, so like it was towards the end of the... What do you call it? Of the... The end stretch of, of the, the track. track. Ah. Yeah, yeah, going to finish it where the boat will pick us up, you know, so that... In Malaysia? Uh, in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, Which part uh, of Malaysia? In Pahang. Wow, Pahang is very north. Ah. Pahang... Right, that would be north, north yeah. Yeah, Pahang is north. Correct. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Geography okay lah. <laughs> nah, that's why. <laughs> Don't have phone, I want to be okay. Can I? Yeah, no lah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah, so in Pahang. And then, um, we went for... Uh, and how many of you, sorry? Two days, one night. Uh, there were five of us, including our guide lah. Okay. So basically, so I'm, all, I'm, I'm the second last person. And then my friend was the last person. Ah, uh, yeah. So like just the two of us behind, right? And then after that, there's uh one of my other friend Dean in front of me, lah. And basically, what we do is that usually when we walk, right? It's like probably about sometimes it can be the the distance between me and the next person can be like an hour. Huh? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not so, like together. Right? No, it's not like together oh. all the way. Like initially yes together, but after a while, right? You just make your own way and then so that's why I like to go. Oh, because yeah. like I'm I'm left with my own thoughts, right? For and be with nature by myself for oh. long stretches of time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And then it's it, it it's fun, it's fun. But then again, uh, during that during that uh moment, right? So what happened is that every time we reach like let's say an intersection, right? right. Uh, then you know the the guy in front would wait. Oh. Yeah. Would mark, for example. Mm-hmm. There, there's always markings. Like okay. like for example, like they will tie strings on it and stuff. But now we don't know whether to take right or left, right? And you wouldn't want to wait for the next person to appear. So you just wait, and then within shouting distance, right? He will shout lah. Okay, the right or left, and then he will call out to me, and then I will answer. Then okay, then I say I will I acknowledge, and then after that we continue lah without saying him, just his voice. This is like tracking etiquette, ah. Uh, 
So on the last uh, intersection before you know we kind of like exit that that trail right to where the boat will pick us up, then uh, I reach the intersection already, and then after that like I I told my friend you heard him uh, sounding out. Or? Yeah, sounding out or not? He said hey, don't have it. Where we were passing, I said, "Can you not going out?" That's why. That's why. Like, I said, uh, "Exiting maybe now." Wow, he happy already. Then after that, he he leave us here. Ah, I said, "Yeah, sir." Then okay. Then where? Then after that, I think right. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Then I asked him double check right. Ah, okay, right. Ah, so we took the right lah. You all got take out a map to see or no? Don't have, don't have. Oh, just yeah, because there's markings already. Right, right. But now the intersection there, right? Then was there any markings or have? But uh. It's either left or right, ah. So you have to choose, ma. Right. So we chose the right, which which was obviously the wrong one, ah. Mm. Okay. So then we got so lost, lost, blah blah blah. And then after that, we so the thing about it is that we walked in, and then after that we realized we were lost already, mm. right? Because there were no human uh, tracks, ah. Oh. Right. So how we know is that you know you see the you will see that like let's say in in the bushes, right? Uh-huh. So if human has gone through it, right, through it's gonna be like like a clearing. Right. But this one is more for animal crossing. It's gonna crossing. be a brick in the sort of like the foliage. roof, the foliage. Ah, the fo- foliage, is it? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Foliage. Yeah, yeah. Then after that, don't have. So it's only animals, oh. right? Because the fo- foliage <laughs> is broken <laughs> underneath only. Ah, uh, so and then after that, we we wanted to turn back. So when we turn our back, right. That everything looks the same. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't oh. like the the same uh, track that we took lah. Oh. Ah, uh, seemingly. Then after that, we decided. Okay, never mind. Then uh, we 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 do what we know. Uh, we follow. Uh, we say we gonna follow the sound of the river because the river will the small river will always lead to the big river, right, right, right. Yeah, but then oh, again, we followed like jungle knowledge. Yeah, yeah, we followed. We followed the river. Hoping for the river to lead us to a bigger to a bigger river. river. Yeah. So take note, this is in uh, Taman Negara, so like the national park lah, right? Where there are tigers and oh, wow. in the yeah. rivers, in the rivers, there are crocodiles and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to track along the bank, but there's no bank. You know what I mean? So it's either you go down into the river and walk, or you turn back lah. Tigers. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a bear grizzly that like how it's quite scary, quite scary. And then after that, <laughs> so we took. Then we were quite desperate. By then we were tired already. We we were walking about thirty minutes. So thirty minutes of walking like in bashing, yeah, with load and then bashing through the 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 foliage, the, the foliage, <laughs> right? It's very tiring, lah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then after like like two days of walking. And yeah. didn't do us any good, so we went into the river. Oh, and yeah, little, how did you guys? Little did we know, uh, the river, right? There's no, there's no banks, right? And then so, it was like this high. So you walked into the river. Yeah. Oh. Completely submerged. Yeah. Know? There's no like 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 gradual. Oh <laughs> gradual. Oh. So step boom straight away. Yeah 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you lost cat got crocodile like. Ah, uh, we didn't think about it at that point. Like, oh, no, 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 no. We just wanted to like ah oh, shit. We need to get up. But then again, then after we got into the river, only then we can see like how far away right. Uh, the the river the 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 opening of the river is ah. Uh. Towards the big river. So how do you guys ev- eventually get back on track? So we said this is a bad idea, right? What we were in the river already. <laughs> <laughs> then then we realized hey, so this is a bad idea, bro. I said yeah yeah. Then I said what do you think? Wait, then my friend, the first thing that he's thinking about, right? Oh shit, my phone, nah. <laughs> so his phone is not in, the crocodile. Yeah. My phone. <laughs> I said, my phone, nah. How? I said why you can still think about your phone? I said we want to go out, sir. Yeah. I said okay okay. Then uh, we try to like desperately grab onto like the roots, right, by the side of the the yeah, the river. The river to because it's like plants and all that. Uh. Yeah, but you know how tree some trees, right, that that grow on the river bank, they have like really thin roots. Yes. Ah, uh, so when you pull, it breaks. Pull, uh, it breaks. Those pull, roots pull, don't. Break. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yes. it's sort of like semi-aquatic plants also, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. yeah. So we were like struggling for probably a good fifteen minutes, ah, uh, in there. 
And then after that, I, we got really, really tired. Then we were like, and then after that, I, I, I was telling my friends, this is uh, where it ends for us. Uh. <laughs> you don't be dramatic. Uh. <laughs> you say you got. Do you any... scared not uh, during the, that time? Uh, you scared not? No. That that fear has gone already, yeah. So you just whether survive or you resign oh. to your fear, lah. Right. So I'm the type that you know, if really like I'm 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 being pushed against the wall, right? I need to come down, lah. There's nothing you can you can do more. Right? I rather die. Let's say I rather finish in a way where you know, like I'm quite chill mm. rather than you know, like like Struggle. family yeah. and stuff, ah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But then yeah. after yeah. that, fifth. 15 minutes later, right? Then the guide finally found us. Oh. Because he realized that we were lost. Off. We were off. So he found he said he kind of knew that we were going to come here lah, ended up here. Because there's only two routes, right? But he's oh. the more experienced, so he know. Then after that, finish the day, pick us up, blah blah blah. We got back onto the boat, right? Then then obviously I come and then after I like kind of like scold my friend, I say, why you never why you walk away? Like, you asked me to go, what? Ah, that's why he told me. You asked me to go, what? I said, no. Oh. I said, you asked. Oh, you asked that's when you realise it might not be. It might be a... Yes. Ah. Because he sounded off. You yeah. didn't hear and he heard someone. Yes. So he oh. sounded off. Then after that, wow. he heard me He heard me telling him to actually move on. I said, I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay. Oh. Yeah. But say, I didn't get anything. So that's what I meant lah. Oh. By so. getting lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a <laughs> yeah. so I mean, much to <coughs> share in one. <laughs> yeah, that's track. one of the one one, one of, of the your more memorable yeah. track wow. mm, mm, mm. I think I think most of the viewers right also they don't know that I know I know you for just how mm. we were talking about it before the thing went live. Mm. We knew each other uh, back in O eight actually. Yeah, long time. Long time. 12, 13 years really. Right? Twelve thirteen years. Yeah. So. I think the first impression when people look at you, right, they say like, wow, this guy, wow, got a lot of tattoos. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> must be... You also, what? Must be a certain <laughs> type, right? <laughs> You're also bald, got a tattoo. Yeah. So, <laughs> people look at you and like, say, wow, this guy must be... Got history. Got history, right? <laughs> got mm. got growing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, okay. you know, I know you for so long, mm. I sort of like, Desensitized already. It's, it's yeah. like quite normal already, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. how like maybe just going off from your interest of you know like strength, agriculture, your recent love for agriculture, trekking, hiking. So how how was it like for you, right, bro? How was it like for you growing up? Oh, when I was growing up, uh. yeah. So like, take us all the way back to. <laughs> Long Young st- ending. Long story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we got time. Okay. Like maybe you can tell us what was one of the bigger <coughs> memories that you had that shaped you into who you are today. Ah, uh, okay. I'll try ah. Uh. Okay, so basically, when I was, uh, I think you also don't know this. Uh, when I was two, right? I was adopted. I know actually. this. Oh, you, you know, know ah. Me before, oh, okay. Yeah. So I was, I was adopted, and then. Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, my bio- biological mom uh, passed, right? And then uh, my biological dad uh, was an addict. So he couldn't care for me lah when my mom passed. So he passed me on to... He not passed me on, like I mean like this family adopted me and then he agreed. Wanted to adopt me and then he agreed, right? Uh, my current family uh, to actually take me in. Uh, despite my current family already... Uh, my, pa- my, my, my parents have already uh, seven children by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at that point in time. Uh. And then uh, they took me in and then raised me uh, until today. So if you were to ask me my childhood, I mean, it's very fond memories. Right? Fond, fond memories. Fond memories because like, I was like the the baby, right? Were you the youngest? Yeah, 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 yeah. When do you know yeah. that you were I mean, when do you know you were When adopted? I was old enough to understand, probably when I was six. Oh. K2, K2, yeah. Oh, that's quite young, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. And then, uh, they, they have never stopped my dad from, like, visiting oh. me and everything. So, like, uh, if he's outside, right, and he's not in prison, he will... He will be able to come and see me, like probably uh, spend an hour with me to talk and everything. Yeah, but there's no bond lah, basically. Mm. But but uh, my parents make it known that you know uh, that 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 uh, you have a dad, you know, and then uh, this is your situation. Uh, this is where you came from and everything. So my extended biological family 
yeah, I spend time with them during Hari Raya, and then yeah, so I have quite a big family, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. And then that's the problem, lah, right? You know, with my wife, right? Uh, not problem with my wife, but <laughs> that's the challenge, challenge, challenge for my wife initially, right? It took her probably about six, seven years before she fully understand who's who. Oh. Ah, who's who? So when I say this is my niece, eh? From which this side? Is my nephew, eh? This is you know, yeah. Why yeah, yeah, yeah. the name different? Why? Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Understand. So it's a very very uh, big family and yeah I mean like uh, childhood wise like I said I have fond memories of it because of that right the the it, it's not boring uh, so like because uh, you grew up with seven other siblings yeah 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 but of course like uh, there's always uh, things that contributed to where I am or uh, something that 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 steered me uh, away. And then uh, landed me in trouble some of the time like, It's not their fault, but you know, the, like as a counselor, you know, like this, this kind of things actually yeah. uh, plays a small part or sometimes and uh, a big, a big part like, as to who I am, who I was. Of course, of uh, course. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Seven siblings. So, I I presume, uh, you didn't come from also a very well to do. Um. Yeah. I mean, middle like, class. Middle class. Wouldn't say middle class also because uh, I mean like I had enough, uh, and and back then we, uh, back then like I have no information about like middle class, high class, how much money. Yeah, of course, we were because, young back then. You uh, didn't know, have and any then idea. my and then to me like I have everything uh, because like my pa- my parents will always uh, provide for me whatever that I need mm. at that point in time, and then I I wasn't also exposed to. Like like a lot of things also that I don't know until I grow up, grow older ma. So for me, very enough. You know, like I have toys. You know, uh, I have, I have education. You know, I I have tuition, mm. right? Uh, and then I think that yeah, your needs your okay. needs are I'm met, yeah of. taken care of. So to me, enough lah. But now that I know, right, it's actually quite a struggle for them lah, mm. because my eldest brother who's 65 now, turning 70 soon. Wow. That's, 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 that's the gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And how old are you this year, bro? I'm 36. Okay. And my dad, so we're talking about the foster dad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, he's 92 now. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Older than my now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so it's like an Atok already. Yeah, Atok already. <laughs> uh, it's a great, great grandfather. Really. My <laughs> niece's nephew, right? Married, like, have kids. Have kids already. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So that's one, two, three, four generations. Mm, yeah. And my elder brother back then uh, had to quit school uh, to take care of uh, the sibling. Yeah, back then that's the norm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Drop out of school to help yeah. your family. Mm, we live in like a three room flat and then like uh I I slept on, on the floor, on the floor yeah. mattress outside yeah. in the living room. Yeah. Yeah, quite fun ah. <laughs> and then yeah, I wasn't complaining or so. So was it like your childhood dream to have something of your own, like you know, your business or you know, like what do you how do you manage to go towards that direction of okay. like the vivid memory, right, of what uh the ambition that I had back then, right, was two things. I wanted to be a bus driver. <laughs> like <laughs> every, also, every kid's dream. Yeah, that's my dream. Bus driver, right, right, right. Bus driver. Yeah. I play with my mom's laundry basket, no? The steering wheel. Yeah, because, because like, my mom like, uh, will always take me on like bus rides, bus right, rides, to, yeah. to go to tuition and stuff that's like it. that. So, always sit in front. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was lah, was and then but before that, uh, I was actually in the uh, national youth team, oh, and yeah. then I was also uh, in the uh, center of excellence for athletic club, right? Wow. Yeah, so like my batch was like Cairo Langley. Oh, Cairo uh, playing for Tanjung Pagar right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Shout then, out to Kairu Amri. Uh, and then uh, Fazrul Nawaz. <laughs> Fazrul Nawaz. Uh, Ashraf Rashid also legend. Uh, the guy who 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 have only one arm. Mm. Uh, uh, and he played professionally. So yeah, 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 they and then they 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 like growing up. They had uh, good support from the family. Their parents would come down and stuff. But for me, like because like my my mom and dad were quite. Uh, Old already, right? And also so, they yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I, I went to training by myself, went to games by myself, and then uh, my siblings, uh, most of them were already married, right? So I had to Check do everything myself. Yeah, 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 and then to them, you know, like playing soccer, you know, same thing, right? Uh, the 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 uh, Asian family mentality, right? They just want me to actually get a good education mm-hmm. because, like, I was the only hope, you know, like like for them. To, to actually like go to school and get a good education and a living yeah and then get a like, safe job yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Singapore that, uh, sort of like the template Singapore yeah yeah, 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 Singapore yeah. that's what that's what they wanted from me yeah which so did that happen ah <laughs> 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 hey, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah of course not lah right of course not and then like I I think like I the how I learn things is quite different from for sure from from how people would other people uh, we all, we all have our different ways of learning mm, right? and mm, different path we take i think for you because also you were brought up in a foster home mm, eh, sorry not foster home with foster parents mm, mm, you had seven other siblings who i presume the age gap is very big yeah 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 and that must have taught you independence from a very young age um uh, right sort of sort right, of you have to sort of be independent yeah. You are forced to be independent at a very young age. Yes, but also it, it creates that uh, lack of, or probably that that I wanted validation also lah because you don't you don't you don't get that right when you do good in sports and right. everything yeah, and yeah. Yeah. nobody did nobody so. is there to reinforce it that hey good job yeah mm. yeah so yeah lah and I was very small back then like like I. I, I was the shortest in class, very small frame, you know. Uh, so like you don't see me being you you won't see me being an athlete, uh, but I was quite agile, quite fast, quite athletic and stuff. Mm. But to them like probably uh sports is not for you lah, you're too small like that, you know, you trip on your own feet and everything. So yeah, so it, it kind of like ah uh, okay, then like slowly, slowly that that gets to you, you know. Mm. Then, you start start yeah. to believe what others yeah. Yeah, 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 say yeah. about. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think this is not for me, like just you know, gonna just give up and then do other stuff lah. How so, how old were you back then? Sorry, the the whole youth of uh, the hmm. youth of center of excellence. Uh, uh, excellence. Yeah. How old were you back then? I was there when I was uh thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. One. And then fifteen. Ah, so fifteen. So that's where after when I was fifteen, right? That was my last year before you know I uh, I dropped out halfway from the from the team. Uh, from the program and then after that you know got into you know uh street gangs uh, basically right uh, so got into trouble after that i think also uh, the viewers need to understand that when i first met and back in 08 we met in uh, we met through a community initiative mm. right, a hobbies sort of like a hobbies group called uh, sg titans yeah. And the Titans in Are they still functioning now? Still, still, they, they, they are they, still, still, still in, ongoing right yeah, now. Yeah, right? still in existence. But the only thing is that they cannot operate because of like of the, the COVID the, restrictions. The, the yeah. restrictions yeah. Yeah. Back then, when I remember trainings <coughs> were on Thursday and Sunday, Sunday. evening. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. And then like oh, yeah, memories. And, and we train like from like probably five until like probably nine, nine ten. And had to keep the equipments back yeah. underneath yeah. a block. Yeah. Uh, so when I first met Andin, obviously I saw all these tattoos and I said, wow, this guy must be very interesting. <laughs> so when I talked to him, he, he was not only a, a great coach, that's, that's how he got his reputation, right? He's one of the more the most uh, sought after and renowned strength conditioning coach. I mean, even for myself, I 
still look up to him in a lot of these aspects. But outside the gym, uh, Andin, I mean, the time spent with him, Andin is also a very wise person because obviously with, with uh, what you have been through in mm. life. So I think even just spending time with him talking like that, I'm, I'm uh, collecting all these wisdom nuggets uh, from you. <laughs> you give me too much credit. <laughs> no, la, no, no. I give credit when it's due, la, but really, like, I still remember back in 08 when I was still serving my NS. So in my NS, you know, we were training uh, at SG Titans. I remember uh, we were flying out to Hong Kong for the kettlebell competition. Ah. Right. Uh, and during that time, I was... During NS, uh, I, was, I wasn't making enough. So I was sort of... On the weekends, I was moonlighting. I was giving PT uh, on the sidelines just to get extra income. I mean that. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so then uh, I think I was training uh, in this gym that is now defunct already. But we made a lot of uh, good connections uh, through mm. through this ho- through this uh, community initiative. Mm, mm. You know, and then of- obviously you went, you went, you after the kettlebell co- competition, you took off, right? Because that's your that's your day job already. Mm, mm. And then yeah, since since then. You have been uh, sort of breaking <laughs> breaking boundaries uh, with your with your business also. Really? So you you were you know kettlebell and then at at one point of time uh you coached you were one of the I remember we met each other quite often during mm. powerlifting meets also. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. were you were coaching quite a few uh female powerlifters also. Uh, so I think that this just goes to show your your you you actually earn your stripes uh, in in the strength conditioning industry thank especially in Singapore. Thank you, thank you. you know, one of the more sort of the but anyway, short talk aside, mm. I want to understand more about your involvement. Like just now when you were talking about like getting involved in street gangs, right? Uh, uh, uh. Like how how was it how was it like? Uh okay. Like how did you even uh I mean you were what, 15, 16 back then? 15, I started. 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like how, what was your, uh, I wouldn't say like foreign into mm. the, under, the underworld, more like, how did you like got into involvement with all these uh, like street gangs? Uh, okay, so like <coughs> basically after, you know, like, like uh, I, I realized that I'm not going to make it in sports, right? I, if I know I will pers- would have pursued it uh. but yeah so then, then after that uh, then I found uh, you know like like friends who are actually you know into, into this kind of like lifestyle uh, basically and I got nothing to do at home and anything other than study which you know like I study differently uh, different people you study differently you. and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh Got got like hung out with like friends and everything. Got to know their their what they do and their lifestyle and everything, and kind of like uh felt that you know I would want to be a part of it and also want to embrace that lifestyle lah. So the thing about me, I think from young right, if I want something, you know, I would I would really like like dive into it. Uh, and then like you know make something out of it as much as possible until mm. you know you, you know that you cannot really and then exhaust you know, all like, options yeah, then yeah, yeah. Yeah. find other options mm. find other solutions so. mm. it's either you do it 100% or you don't mm. do it at all lah. so if you notice like even for tracking right so like I really dive deep into it and then got into like uh the 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 whole you know specific like specific really understand the ins and outs yeah yeah like yeah. hiking yeah. and tracking ah same for bicycle now right <laughs> so like, I really want to know more about it and stuff and you know if for for jujitsu you know like you ask me why I don't I pursue jujitsu and stuff I said like you know I'm I, I'm not ready to actually embrace that that jujitsu lifestyle, lifestyle because you know I feel that I will do a dishonor to like other people who are really into it right, rather right, you know, right, you know right. and um, do it halfway and then you know say I do jujitsu take pictures <laughs> and then after that you know you 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 are not really embracing that lifestyle because everything needs hard work man. Yes. Yeah. So same same for that uh mentality. 
uh, with yeah with with I think uh, gangsterism lah I should say. So I really went all out into it. So basically, like the goal would be to actually be um, not so good of a gangster, but you know, like like really into it that you actually have to actually serve time, and then you know, uh, branded as you know a tribe member. Mm. So that was the so end game. To to like yeah. to be a tribe member, you must serve time. Uh. You don't have to, but you know, like for me, you know, I'm not oh, a track yeah. member if I don't, oh. if I don't serve time, ah. Okay, okay. Ah, yes, like your your own stem of approval. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. For myself, ah, that's the expectation that I set for myself, ah. So basically, and then so that's where, like, uh, you know, like like I I I lost all the fear or the the thought about the consequences, you know, for other people, uh, due to my actions, ah. So that's where I went all out, like you know. Like get into fights and then like knives, uh, come into play and then everywhere I go, I would, like you know, we would bring, uh, knives, parangs and everything and then slash people without even like having second thoughts about it lah. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know what I don't know from a psychological perspective. I don't know, I don't know what you would like diagnose or assess. But you know, I I I like. You know when I was caught and then uh, institutionalized, right? And then we have this like uh, like site evalu- evaluation, evaluation and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. At fifteen, at fifteen I got that, and then after that, uh, at sixteen I got another one. So that's where you know based on the site event, you know they they decided to put me into prison maximum security. So. At sixteen. At sixteen, once I turn sixteen, the legal age. The legal be age. Then you were in prison. what remand. No, no, I was sent to uh, prison lah, in Changi. So, Moon Crescent Prison. Yeah. How, how long did you serve? Oh, uh, I didn't know. Bro. I thought <laughs> all along was remand. Oh, I didn't know you were sent to... Oh, no, no. I served time. Like, maximum security uh, with all the... Uh, with all the regular inmates. Yeah, yeah uh. regular inmates. Uh. So, I was in the juvenile home first, right? Right, because so 15, juvenile home. 15. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, in juvenile home, you are still able to actually uh, go home. Right to yeah. they they let you go home but home, you. home leave and stuff yeah, 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 yeah. Not tagging uh. yeah don't have don't have, don't don't have, have. yeah for boys home they don't have so uh it took me about a year before I'm I'm given my first home leave usually about four five months they will let you go lah but you know like because inside then there's also like the cases of like bullying and everything that I commit inside yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of like stack up yeah yeah and then after that finally I got my first uh, home leave right uh, that's before that's that morning okay i got called up because i have a case pending uh, already served right uh, in isolation segregation and everything just need to uh, execute the caning so uh so once you cleared your caning then you know probably you will have a few weeks to for your case worker to evaluate yeah. and then recommend to the superintendent whether you can go home or not but that morning surprise I got called up after breakfast. Went up then about nine a.m. Uh, I got called up for caning. I was happy, you know. Like I said, ah oh, shit. Then probably today Saturday. Very seldom Saturday got caning. Oh. I think I'm going home today. Oh. They didn't tell me, ma. So because I think they know that if they were te- to tell me in advance, right? You know, like because inside so I had a rap lah, right? You know, I was smuggle stuff. Mm. We we were smuggle stuff every time. Oh, like, this like, boys home, yeah, 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 yeah. So. So got kining and then after kining, you know they asked me to actually put on my uh, my uh, home leave uniform and then went home ah that day. So I spent that night uh, at home and then eh hey, yeah that night at home I went yeah spend the night at home with my family blah blah. blah. Then the next day on Sunday I was supposed to go back to boys home already. Uh-huh. Uh, but then again uh, I. Skip. I skip ah, I skip down. <laughs> then I skip the, the the whole process of coming back. So I I I, I absconded. Ah, so I absconded. Then uh the that was Sunday right, and then Monday. Uh, Sunday met up with my friends and everything, and then Monday we went to uh, Bukit Panjang to commit another case ah, basically. Yeah, there was a like a rivalry and everything, so. Uh, we went. We went to actually slash uh, the person. Oh, so that's my second so, uh, second offense. Yes, uh. Yeah. Back then you were still fifteen. 
I was 16 already. 16, oh, 16 so already. turn 16 already, then they can properly process you. Yeah. So not juvenile already. Yeah, not juvenile. So I was, uh, after about a week, then got caught, right? And got caught. Then that's where I was uh, remanded uh, in uh, Queenstown. Yeah. Queenstown remand oh, prison. Queenstown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, no more already. Yeah. So nine months in there. Nine months, blah, 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 case finish. And then, uh, uh, didn't went to trial because like you know we were obviously guilty and then uh, you know there's offers and everything so we took the offers uh, three and a half years plea guilty yeah three and a half years six tra- uh, six strokes of the cane so took it lah uh. but uh, but of, due to good behaviour that's why you served nine months or? no 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 nine, nine months was in three months oh nine months three months ah, sorry yeah. so there's no bail lah basically I mean like like you can you could be bailed but if I were to got to to be bailed by my family I will go back to Boys home because I'm still serving my time right, for right. the first offense, man. Right, right, right. Ah. So then after that, nine months in demand, then sentence, then that's where I was shipped off to uh, Moon Crescent, lah, uh, around Changi, Changi Prison there. Wow. Yeah. And how long did you serve in Ah, uh, that one, that one was about. Uh, I was eighteen already. Yes, I was. Eh, I was seven, seventeen already. Sixteen. Yeah, yeah, 17 really. So, 17. I remember, uh, I turned 18 in prison. Yes, yeah, yeah. so oh. because I remember that. Yeah. See, today is the day I can legally smoke, you know, I can legally drink back then, right? Mm. Yeah, but I, I was serving my time inside lah. Mm. So, uh, all in all, I got released when I was uh, 20. Oh. Yes, when I was 20. Oh, that's heavy, bro. Yeah, yeah. so from... So. So basically, from fifteen to twenty, I was uh, institutionalized. Uh, basically, you know. And then I think that's the most important, important years of someone, you know, turning into an adult. You know, like like you should be exposed to like like how you should be socializing and everything. So, but mine was a bit different, lah. Uh. Yeah. So it took me a while before like, when I was outside to actually get used to it. Mm-hmm. And when I got out, like I was I was used to violence and everything. So um, it took me probably about I don't know probably about ten years before I actually uh, back to not back to normal but you know like, like understand like how to how actually to socialize social empathize yeah, 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 yeah. What, uh, what is okay what is not and stuff because I think if you remember back then also like you know any altercations that I might have with like anyone or disagreement yeah. I think. Like to me, the solution you're not happy, you fight lah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no like diplomacy or yes. there's no like you know cooling off period or whatever to actually yeah. talk about it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, took me a while. How was it like, uh, like living in remand versus eh, sorry, living in uh, juvenile home uh. versus like now that you are incarcerated as a as an adult, and then now you are in prison really. Uh, How was it like? It's actually quite different, but uh. I cannot say one is better than the other though because like uh, discipline is higher uh, higher and forced because you are treated as adults as kids no oh, in, as kids. in, in, oh, in okay. juvenile okay. Yeah, I mean like people will make you uh, force you to actually do that right okay yeah and then after that uh, in prison it's actually uh, the rules of the prisoners for you to actually have that 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 that, that discipline, mm. uh, and then also the mentality also like uh, bullying, uh, rapes happen more in juvenile actually than in uh, prison. Oh. Yeah. So, so you witness, you like hear. That. Witness. Yeah, yeah. I I actually was I was a uh, what do you call that lah. Uh? Perpetrator lah, uh, on different occasions for bullying, for bullying yeah. So oh. I was caught and then because it's the law of the jungle right, either you or them. Mm, yeah. So involuntarily, you know, like I made the choice lah. I mean like not involuntarily lah. Actually yeah, I made the choice to actually not be bullied lah, mm. right. So I, mean, I the have to. Environment you gotta stand up for yourself. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah. It's hardcore bro. Yeah. Wow. So anyway, fast forward. Uh. Out of prison. How was it like for you out of prison? Like you come out, uh, a lot of things change obviously during those five lot, years. Lot, lot, lot. Yeah, uh, my expectations and then at the same time also living up to other people's expectations of me. 
was quite uh, a heavy task uh, to begin with uh, back then. So and then after that, you know, like uh, I got married actually uh, when I was uh, twenty. When I was twenty one lah, uh, I got released from prison, and then uh, my girlfriend back then got pregnant, and then we got married because because the. Thinking that people have is that okay once you are settled down then after that it everything is okay. okay ah should be okay ah suddenly suddenly you become you know, which is not the case lah basically because I'm still I'm still what do you call that ah uh, uh, trying to learn yeah being kind rehabilitated navigate your way yeah. through life yeah. right this thing all yeah. life actually the rehabilitation part will actually start probably outside once you are released that's the most important mm. thing inside there's no rehabilitation lah mm. I mean like Yes, a bit. They try to, but you know, not as uh, extensive as, or not as real life mm. as yeah. what you will face outside. outside uh, yeah. Preparing you for the world, right? Like mm. you're trying to get back into society. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, it didn't work out, lah, right? My, my, my first marriage, right? Uh, and then after that, after about a year or so, a year and a half like that, then I got, we got the divorce. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember seeing recently your... Uh, daughters, you celebrated your daughter's birthday. Right? Ah, yeah, that was so yeah. sweet. Yeah. How how old is she? She's fifteen now. Fifteen, wow, wow. teenage really. Bro. Fifteen, yes, yes. Turbulent years. <laughs> so now it's your turn to sort of like coach her. Uh, I mean, you all obviously have a very good relationship, right? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say uh like a normal uh daughter and dad relationship. Not not the ideal, but you know uh. I always make known to her that you know like I'm always there lah, and 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 uh, thankfully she sees it that way, and then she confides in me once in a while. So yeah, yeah, I just want her to know that I'm always always uh, there for her, no matter what. Because like you know you you can you can actually make mistakes and everything you know, and then rebellious and everything. We have, we've been there, you know. You don't agree with certain things that enforced on you by your parents. Right, and right, right. Yeah, but but. Uh, always try to reason out with her lah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the least I can do lah. That's very yeah. wise though. Mm-hmm. I mean, she can see. I mean, you are her biological dad, so she can see that you know you are like a open. You are like an open book to her. You share your past with her, mm. so in hopes that she don't. Like go down that path also like yeah, you, right? Yeah, right. Right. So that's the least I can do because the mom has done a good job all these years, right? Raising her, and then yeah, thankfully she's quite uh, sound uh, in, in her decision making and also uh, in how she actually uh, carries herself that's nice uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think I think also uh, just to segue away from uh, your life story right just now huh? you talked about like when you were out of prison at 20 it took you like almost 10 years mm. to sort of get back to society norms mm. right I think not many people also know that uh, on the path to as a business owner yourself mm. on the path to set up uh, to setting up uh, Strength Avenue like mm. what you have today how old is Strength Avenue already? Uh, five so Five years five yeah years I remember five years because you all started at uh, Kampung Baru yeah. yeah so even before you had that spot in Kampung Baru uh, Strength Avenue the first spot in Kampung Baru uh, I know the process for you was quite turbulent also Mm. Right, because yeah. you had failed partnerships, mm. and then, uh, I I remember, uh, you used to have a uh, gym at near Bukit Ho Swee there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because uh, when I was studying part time, uh-huh. uh, you very graciously allowed us to use the space for one of our practicals. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, I can remember. <laughs> that was like one of my last few uh, last semester in sports science. Ah, okay. I'm studying sports science back then. And then, I forget who's the lecturer's name already. Anyway, we, mm-hmm. the class, this, uh, the school uh, held the practicals there. Ah. And it was a very nice, nice place. Nice, uh, it was a very nice setup. Huge, yeah. huge space. So, you know, listening to all your, your stories, right? Like mm. how you grew up, your turbulent years, and obviously now a very successful business owner. Mm. Uh, or I see you as a very successful business owner because I look up to you. Uh, like now reaching Strength Avenue like where it is today what sort of advice you have for us young business owners like knowing knowing the process how you started out in the 
sort of strength conditioning the fitness industry mm. to where you are today because it's not a it's not a straight path yeah yeah so you and, know like and the deep is I, I know because you share with me details mm. right mm. Um, in different phases of your business and the deep is the, the decline is quite sudden and very steep you know mm. and you seem to seem to navigate through these uh, these obstacles pretty well yeah, so like what kind of what kind of advice do you have like for people who try and earn our stripes in our own industry? Mm. Okay. Quite a lot. But I think one thing that uh that that me as like let's say a business owner realize, right, is that uh two things actually. First is that once you have a business, right, you don't have people working for you. You have to work for your people. And then you have to think about that, right? If you have employees or you have uh, partners, you know, you have to work for them. You mm-hmm. cannot think about them actually doing the job for you, lah. And that will never change. Uh, if you if you have that, then actually the sacrifices that you make, you know, or the shortcomings that might come uh, in the future, right, would actually be a bit more valuable because you are already prepared to 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 actually face so them, lah. Bear the consequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and second thing is that I don't I don't believe in in the word uh, self made uh, basically. Right, there's always you you need people. No man's an island. You need people. Need a support system. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you always right. have you you will always have to see yourself as the weakest one, or the most stupid one in 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 the in, in the in, room. In, in the yeah in the room right or with the people that 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 you have. Uh, like alongside you lah, like you always have to give them credit, you know, like benefit of the doubt, etc. Uh, but yeah, you don't have, you don't put yourself yourself high up uh, on a pedestal lah. Basically, you always think about you working for them and then trying to make them, you know, uh, have better life or better career opportunities because of the environment that you would want to create. Rather than you know like thinking about the money first, yes, money mm. is, is important lah, right? It's for, essential lah. Yeah, right. for business and stuff, but but uh, don't forget the objective of why you actually mm. uh start out the business for, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's 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 something that I have learned lah, and then and of course that uh people will disappoint you. People will actually uh what do you call that uh slow you down you feel and stuff but you have to accept that people other people work at different pace yes. same like you different right uh, yeah same like me I, I i i do things when at my own time right not 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 saying that there's no urgency but there's a window of you opportunity. know opportunity and also there's window where you will excel in executing that that that, that plan or that task at hand lah Right, and at the same time, you always have to trust your the people around you. So that's the hardest part, right? Uh, based on, and based on based on my experiences, right? You know, uh, trust is very hard to come by, lah. So once you give them, then you have to really trust them. I don't have doubts, lah. Yeah. And you believe in their capabilities also, lah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Lastly, probably you have to accept, right? If you are a business owner. Uh, no matter how much uh, you actually reiterate about your vision, your philosophy, right? People that are around you, right, might not have the same amount of energy or yeah, that that that, that level of uh, intensity, that, intensity you that you would want to bring. So you cannot say you lazy, you just, or this fellow lazy, or this fellow slow lah. Like, cannot catch up to you because they also have their own problems. Uh, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you have to oh. accept that lah. Uh. It's very wise coming from uh from I mean I I might be wrong lah, right? But then again, uh it, so far, you know, it has worked for me in terms of not making me like a multi millionaire or anything like that, but but creating that cohesiveness, you know. And creating a conducive ecosystem for your members, for your team mm. members also. Yeah, like for yourself also even. Yeah. My team and my team is made up of diverse people. You know, like like we have different different uh what do you call it? Uh, different views on different things, right? 
and then also different hobbies you know we don't hang out like like together all the time best friends or anything like that we come in do our jobs you know and but you all still can function together. as a team yeah, you, know, yeah. you feed off each other mm, so feed mm. off each other's uh, strengths also yeah. yeah I think like when I first met when I first met you back in uh, SG Titans 2008 right mm. uh, not many people know because like today you are this renowned coach business owner of Strength Avenue you actually started off teaching kettlebells to migrant workers. Ah, uh, yes. Right, so like this whole uh, idea where I see in young uh, personal trainers these days mm. uh, that they want to be on the fast track to get fame, mm. you know, be famous because, you know, it's, in- it's inevitable uh, because yeah. with like the advancement of technology, sadly, a lot of people sort of have a voice on the internet right now. Mm. Mm. Like back then, 08, it was just, it was just like, you know, at the start of mm. uh, technology, right? Of Facebook, Twitter, all this. Yes. Like back in 2008, uh, we were training at Kettlebells and you sort of, you, you knew that teaching or coaching these migrant workers uh, wouldn't sort of give you a lot of monetary remuneration. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't pay you well. I mean these people they, they don't pay me at all. They don't pay you at all. <laughs> but you you went into the you or you coach them mm. because you wanted to uh, sharpen your craft. Yes. Right? You want to you want to teach uh, to someone who have no uh, physical just, background at all. Yeah and the language barrier. And the language basically. barrier exactly. Yeah. So I think that is when I when I heard that right, wow, I was like that actually uh, sort of inspired me, I don't know, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, that's that inspired me because like nobody is in the fitness industry to say that hey wow, I want to make a million dollars one day. Mm-hmm. You know? Like I mean we have we have those people uh, but if you want to, if your goal is to make money, this is just my personal opinion. Uh. If you want to make money, maybe look at other industry. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think most people come into the health and fitness industry because they first fall in love yeah. with training. Yeah. And they find something that is beneficial to them, then they want to pass it down to others. Mm. Right? So, like, maybe you, can you just share a little bit about like, you know, before even concepting, con- conceptualizing the concept that one day you are going to have your own brand, mm-hmm. have your own business, right? Before the birth of your first business to Strength Avenue, right? Just before the first business, how was it like for you? Like, you know, you, you were teaching kettlebells to migrant workers. Mm. Okay. Back before, like, you have, like, Instagram or actually the... There's internet, but there's not so much information about kettlebells. Like right now. <laughs> so much content right yeah. now. Yeah. So like there's no one you can follow. Right? You watch DVDs, either you watch DVD or you read magazines or you can books also very hard to find yeah. actually back then. Yeah yeah. And then uh Caterpillar. so like watch DVDs a bit and then you know work on it and then uh that's all because like uh the only person that actually taught me kettlebells uh, was Herman, right? Yes, uh, the OG, right? Herman. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shut most up. People, most people don't even know Herman. <laughs> Herman is like the first, the Singap- first Singaporean YouTube uh, fitness influencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And back, the- then, back then, when he had a blog post, mm. I, I was one of the followers. His blogs were all followed by coaches, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Herman. Yeah. I'm actually not the OG of kettlebells. Actually, Herman is. Child, yes. Right. So, uh, he introduced me to kettlebells, and then after that, he taught me uh, a bit here and there, and I practiced lah by myself. Sorry. And then, uh, you already bought a kettlebell. By yeah, I already have. Uh, one of my clients actually, uh, bless her, uh, Pamela, uh, who's back in the states now, right? Uh, bought me a set. Of kettlebells, right? So like all the way from eight to, to, 24. to 22. 228. Oh, 28. 228. Yeah, that's my first set of kettlebells. So I practice, 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 and then after that, I practice under the void deck, right? Because it was banned in commercial gyms back yes, then, yes, right? I yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember going to one of the gyms and. Back then, I was crazy enough to bring a kettlebell to the gym myself. Mm-hmm. Imagine I take MRT uh, with a 
the caravan people give you like weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So back in commercial gyms, already I was uh, trying to work with kettlebells lah. But then again, uh, it was frowned upon. So like when kettlebell sessions has to be conducted like at the kapak. Yes. You know, because like, they don't want that liability. Yeah. You know? And then uh, after I step out of the, the, what they call it, the commercial gym set up. And then I uh, went, went on my own. So that's where I met Pam, right? And then she bought for me my first set of kettlebells. So I coached uh, like the housewives uh, uh, in the Woodgrove area. Woodgrove would be... You know, uh, American school. Yeah, American school. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I do boot camps, I do kettlebell workouts there. And then uh, on my free time, uh, at night, I will practice my own uh, kettlebell training lah, under my void deck. So that's where like there was a construction going on. And then uh, this group of, uh, what do you call that? Uh, Migrant workers, right? Yeah. Uh, from India and Bangladesh, right? Uh, wanted to try it out lah. So that's where we became a crew, <laughs> so-called, right? So we train probably, I think three times a week. Eh? Wow. Monday, wow. Wednesday, Friday wow. evening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, must yeah. be like the fittest in the <laughs> area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, Cute. even Sunday, sometimes they want to train. But I say Sunday, you're off day, right? I say, never mind. Rather than I waste, you you know, waste money, uh, drinking Sunday. or whatever, yeah. you know, I want to train. But wow. yeah, I say, Sunday, my off day, you can take my kettlebell and then you practice themselves and stuff. Wow. And I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so that's why lah, you know, like chicken and duck, right? Talking and then I'm conversing and then me giving instructions. Instructions, right? Yeah. How to coach. Sometimes even when I teach kettlebell movements, because it's a ballistic movement, right? Mm. Hard to even use English. Someone who understand English to yeah. coach really. What more with this language barrier? Mm. Like a hinge at the hip. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you so you have to come up with like different analogies and then like different words, right? Because they won't understand what hinging yeah, 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 of course, of course. Then you have to show also la. So that went on for about a year, I think. A year. Yeah, because I remember until the the HDB flats beside my my block, right, is actually like uh developed. Develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So just consistency, a year of coaching. Yeah, a year plus, uh, almost yeah. two actually. I think yeah. I w- I'm also uh, victim, I mean, not victim, also guilty of this because like, you know, we coach general population, like when I coach you, I can use very big jargon like, oh, hinge at the hip, push your hip back. You know, I can use very big jargon to explain like, you know, biomechanics mm. and all that to make myself sound smart. Huh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think the... To break it to break coaching down in its simplest form, uh, mm. I feel like this is a very good example. If you cannot teach exercise to the machi next door or downstairs, mm. right? Then maybe there's something wrong with the mm. with the cues really. Something wrong with the cue coaching mm. really. Like coaching don't need to be complex. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Like yeah. don't need to be complex. You can use like like you said, simple analogy that yes. people can relate with. Mm. Right? right. If you cannot even uh, use simple terms to understand. Like if a seven year old cannot understand what you're talking right then forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then, and then also, of course, like uh, so we are also quick to judge when we hear someone give a different cue to yeah individual client, not our client, no, individual sure, client, sure, right? Sure. And then we're like, hey, wrong. But actually, you know, we have to understand now that it's individualized. Yes. Maybe this fella don't understand what this movement means. So he, the the, the coach, have to actually adjust uh, adjust uh, the words used, and it's not has to. He it doesn't have to be like the textbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah big textbook. See, yeah. Like you but, say, also, mm, but also don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes when you find yourself explaining, uh, like like uh, uh, big jargon words to like probably Priscilla, because sometimes uh, your subconscious, right? Because you are trying to to actually think about or reiterate what you have just learned, right? right, nah, right it's right. not you purposely you showing up. Ah, yeah, you have to practice. practice ma. Right, yeah. right, right. Sometimes that's how I memorize like, okay, the, some some cues or some uh, paragraph or studies that I have learned. Uh, sometimes it came out then after, ah, oh, shit, 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 wrong. Then I will find another right, word. Right, yeah. right, right. So, this is, I mean, 2021 has been quite a, I mean, 20, even 2020, right, since last year, Circuit Breaker, Rough, bro. Rough. Yeah, yeah. as business owner, rough. I only started, I only started this year, 2020, 2021. Mm. So, coming into, like, 2022, because this is going to be the end of the year already, right? Yeah. What can we expect from Strength Avenue? <laughs> Any <laughs> other interesting, uh, uh, 
any other interesting, you know, uh, goals that you have set for yourself coming into the new year or just to finish your year strong? Uh, we are really preparing for what's going to happen next year. So I usually prepare the team early, right? Uh, we are actually moving on, uh, actually not moving on, but we have been doing it for a while now, but we are going to be a bit more uh, focused on, on expanding it, which is our semi-private program, lah, right, basically, right, right. right? So instead, uh, we want to make, uh, because personal training is usually, not usually, but for some people out there, it's not that affordable. Mm. Uh, so what we created is a semi-private program where you still have uh, access to your own coaches, coaching. personalized coaches, uh, personalized coaching, programming, lifestyle prescription, consultation, everything. But in a semi-private setting where you get to train with a community right. so it's not a class whereby you know everybody does the same thing but it also uh, it, it is more uh, of you being autonomous with your training right. right and then practicing the habits that has been set or agreed upon between you and your coach right to actually execute it uh, but at the same time also take charge of your own training right, right. right. Uh, and then train with uh, a group of people who are actually going through the same uh, programming or the same uh, training phase, training so phase with you are yes yes so that's something that uh, we want to focus more upon because we want to actually start uh, developing a community where they are autonomous with their training uh, and then also uh, quite versed in, in, in uh, training philosophy right, and right, also right. the information out there uh, learning how to filter how to sieve you... out the right yes. information I think that's the biggest thing for a coach right? to mm. one day finally see your client you know, yeah. making informed decision mm. right? uh, being educated like you say being autonomous with their own training program they know what to do right. you know, they know how to auto-regulate I think that's very important yeah. also yeah. because uh, different life phase sometimes the go-go shift right? yes. so, and so yeah I'm see. not gonna lie uh, it's also uh, because I want my coaches to actually be working less on the floor, right? But probably bringing home the same amount or probably more uh, by by spending less time uh, on the floor mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, like like uh, sorting out their, their own lifestyle. Because, like, if you notice, you know, the trend for the longest time, right, <coughs> is that, you know, uh, your... Your value as a coach right, is based on how many hours you do. Yes, right? yes. But here you are preaching about lifestyle, preaching about, you know, like like mental awareness, uh, well, mental self-care, health, self-care well-being. and everything. But you are working from 6 a.m. back to back until probably 10 p.m., you know. And yeah, you bring shit tons of money home, but you are... Bueno. Yeah, you are actually eating like gobbling down your food five, ten minutes, you know, behind the pantry while your clients warming up and everything. So I find that's kind of like hypocritical, right? Yeah, right yeah. After a while. So yeah, I'm trying to find a solution. Find a balance. For, yeah, for every life balance. Yeah, win-win situation for clients and also uh, us coaches. Uh. Yeah. yeah, so at the same time, it's hard uh, because yeah, it's sure, something new, sure. it's a new concept, right? right. But, but uh, for the past few months, it has done a lot of good for uh, for yourself and your coaches yeah, so. yeah, yeah yeah of course like you want to be the embodiment of the advice that you give out to your clients also. yeah right you don't want to just like you say be hypocritical right yeah. preaching about mental well-being work-life balance and you grind yourself down from 6 to 10 yeah and then you, your relationship with I don't know the people at home your loved ones you know got no social life you know and that. so same thing yeah. la, it's like working relationship right yeah, it's like like working for the money. Yes, we have money, but you don't have that that, that time to spend moments, right? Yeah, yeah. missing out moments. Yeah, wow. that's very that's a that's a that's very wise because I think in one of my Q and A previous like last two months, someone was talking about hey, is the asking me whether the fitness industry very lucrative or not hmm. because they see like oh, the PTs they can afford nice things for themselves, and then last time when I used to rent from ran a gym space from another gym mm-hmm. uh, the coaches there or the PTs there they are very yeah, like what you say uh, they have back to back business is booming yeah. for them uh, but they wear it like a badge of honour yeah, 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 <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean yeah, they, yeah. they wear it like a badge of honour they were like go around asking each other like hey, wow, how many sessions you do this month you know, I, like, 
Wow, last month uh, I worked 200 hours. Uh. Yeah. This, so, so it's like, it's like weird flex, but okay. Mm, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yes, yes, like weird yes. flex, but okay. Because that has always been the case, right? right? Uh, for you wear their burn out like a badge of honor. Yeah, and you know, like four or five hours of sleep, and then after yeah, that. And you got to be in the gym at six, eh, you know? Yeah, and if that's what you want, then. Okay lah, but we, and then you might say that uh, okay, yeah, I can do this for the uh, first uh, five years of my career or probably five I guess I'm still young and everything but you remember this in these things uh, becomes a habit, mm-hmm. right? And then especially when you have tasted money and then you adjusted your lifestyle yes. and everything you have to keep up with that lifestyle yes. right? it's a yes. never ending step up but it's very difficult to yes, it's a never ending down. cycle so yeah lah, if you were to ask me whether it's lucrative then I don't know. It depends on what you want, lah, right? And then what depends you want on what's to the get end game also, right? Yeah. And then remember your objective, right? Whatever you do, remember your objective first. Why you are in this industry in the first place? Mm. You know, if money is your drive, then okay, so be it. Uh, yeah, we are not okay. here to judge, right? Right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then again, uh, I always tell my 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 coaches, right? Also, uh, would you rather be respected by your peers or would you be respected by you know like like the people that doesn't that don't matter and then see you having this kind of like luxuries so called so yeah. yeah and we know lah right whether in the industry we know like okay uh, 200 300 hours actually does little or probably jack shit for your for your development <laughs> as a coach right after a while you become very good at uh, Talking. Copy and paste also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Not taking shit, but this is the it's truth. Truth, it's and truth. I've been there, I've worked in a commercial setting, yeah. right? So I knew the ways around around it to make it seem like, you know, I'm doing something, but in actual fact, no, I'm like, just putting you through uh, the one hour and then moving on to the next and stuff. And that is not what I want in the first yeah, place, yeah, right? Yeah. That's right. why you have, you started, you know, Strength Avenue, you have your vision. Like with mm. things that you are doing with your coaches now with all the OPEX also right mm. yeah. so yeah so wow, we are almost one and a half hours in really okay. so maybe to to close the show maybe you can let the viewers and uh, listeners know how to find you on your social media oh okay like you... your personal and your your ah. and strength avenues uh Social media. Okay. My personal uh, handle on IG is Endin Kade and uh, for Strength Avenue it's strengthavenue.com.sg. It's actually the handle the handle uh, for Instagram. your, your yeah. website. Yeah. Eh, yeah. hey, but your Instagram is at Strength Avenue. Strength Avenue at strengthavenue.com.sg. Oh, that's the Instagram handle also. Yes. Okay, okay. Correct. Yeah. So uh, at Endin Kade and at strengthavenue.com.sg yeah, Thank yeah. you so much Andin for your time today I think the viewers and listeners definitely can uh, really benefit from you know, you, our short you. chat today Thank you for, thank thank you you so for having me Thank you guys thank you.